On November 13, 2022, these four university students were discovered stabbed in their home in Moscow, Idaho. Local police described the case as very complex and it took more than six weeks for a suspect to be arrested. We pieced together information from a case affidavit released by authorities, verified publicly available evidence, and pulled in ABC News reporting to create a visual timeline outlining significant events in this case. I'm Emmanuel Saliba, a senior reporter with ABC News. It's around 9 p.m. local time on Saturday, November 12th in Moscow, Idaho. According to an affidavit released by authorities, Zana Kronodal and her boyfriend Ethan Chapin are seen hanging out at the Sigma Chi house. It's about a five minute walk from their off-campus house on King Road. Zana's roommates Kaylee Gonzalez and Madison Mogan are at the Corner Club. It's a historic sports bar in town. They stay at the bar for about three hours, according to an affidavit released by authorities. And around 1.30 a.m., Kaylee and Maddie leave the corner bar. The next available images we have of them are in this surveillance footage obtained by ABC News. They're heading towards a local food truck, which is about a six minute walk from the bar. Police say this man with them is not a suspect. Hey, this is the grub truck. They have been streaming live on Twitch since about 10 p.m. And around 1.41 a.m., we see all three of them walk into frame. Maddie and Kaylee order food. Have a good night. Bye. Hey, Bill. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Hey, I think I would like the, um, the cod banana. No, she's okay. you up on the Cool. Thank you. Absolutely. How many more do you need? Uh, That's the second one? Awesome. Don's mom. Um, $10. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Forty-seven eight. Thank you very much. They wait around for about 10 minutes. Around 1.51 a.m., they grab food from the truck window and walk out of frame. Police confirm that at this point, they get picked up by a car service and about six minutes later, they arrive at home on King Road. According to an affidavit, Ethan and Zana are ready in the house, along with two other roommates. 2.47 a.m., according to police, a phone belonging to the suspect, Brian Koberger, stops connecting to the cell network in nearby Pullman, Washington. This is where he lives and studies criminology as a PhD student at Washington State University. 2.53 a.m., Authorities say a white sedan consistent with a vehicle registered to Koberger is seen traveling towards the highway that connects Pullman and Moscow. It's only about a 10 mile drive between the two cities. At 3.29 a.m., surveillance footage obtained by police from the King Road neighborhood captures a white sedan making an initial drive by the victim's house. Authorities say this car will make another two passes in the next 30 minutes. It's 4 a.m. According to the affidavit, Zana receives a DoorDash delivery. And a source tells ABC News that the delivery is contactless and the order is left at the front door. A surviving roommate would later tell authorities that around this time, 4 a.m., she wakes up to what sounds like Kaylee playing with her dog in the room on the third floor. She also reports hearing someone say, there's someone here. 4.04 a.m., authorities say the white sedan is seen driving into the neighborhood a fourth time. 4.12 a.m., according to phone records obtained by police, Zana is awake and using TikTok. The affidavit states that the same surviving roommate says she hears what sounds like crying coming from Zana's room. She opens her door a second time and says she hears a male voice say something to the effect of, it's okay, I'm going to help you. At 4.17 a.m., this security camera on a neighbor's home picks up distorted audio of what sounds like voices or a whimper followed by a loud thud. A dog can also be heard barking numerous times. This camera is less than 50 feet from Zana's bedroom. The affidavit states their surviving roommate then opens her door a third time. She sees a masked man walking past her towards the sliding glass door in the kitchen. In frozen shock, she locks her door. 4.20 a.m., police say the white sedan is seen leaving the neighborhood at a high rate speed. 5.25 a.m., authorities say that same vehicle is seen on five cameras back in the Pullman area near where the suspect lives. And then, 
Between 9.12 and 9.21 a.m., police say data collected shows the suspect's phone appearing near the scene of the murders. About eight hours after the killings, a 911 call reports an unconscious person at the scene of the crime. Shortly after, Moscow police discover the bodies of four students. The facts of the case that we know right now. November 16th, police reveal the four victims were stabbed to death. The four were stabbed with a knife, but no weapon has been located at this time. We are eternally grateful that we spent so much time with him. This is Ethan's mom on November 30th at a vigil honoring her son and the three other victims. That's the most important message that we have for you and your families, is to make sure that you spend as much time as possible with those people because time is precious and it's something you can't get back. We're looking for a 2011 to a 2013 Hyundai Elantra. December 7th, no suspects have been publicly identified and Moscow police appeal to the public for help. Any assistance you can give us, um, anybody that owns one, anybody that knows of someone who owns one or may have been driving one, if you could get a hold of us um, through our tip line or um, call us directly, um, we'd appreciate that. December 15th, Koberger and his father are driving eastbound on I-70 when they get pulled over by a Hancock County Sheriff's deputy. Hello. How you doing? How y'all doing today? Good, good. Take a look at your driver's license real quick if I could. See, he's right up on that van, man. He was right up on the back end of that van. So you're coming from Washington State University? And you're going where? Oh. Oh, okay. We're a little, we're slightly much for driving hours. Hours, days. Hours. They're driving across the country to their family home in Pennsylvania. Okay. Well, do me a favor and don't follow too close, okay? Ten minutes later, they are pulled over again, but this time by Indiana State Police. Both departments would later say they had no identifying information on the suspect at the time of these stops or the alleged vehicle involved. The Indiana State Police added in another statement that its agency wasn't directed by the FBI to make the traffic stop. 15 days later, Koberger is arrested in Pennsylvania. The FBI identified the suspect by linking DNA evidence from the crime scene to a public genealogy database. January 3rd. He is extradited back to Idaho where he is charged with felony burglary and four counts of first degree murder. In a statement, his extradition lawyer in Pennsylvania said his client was eager to be exonerated. The suspect remains in custody awaiting his next court appearance in June.